Hey guys. Welcome to Couple. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. The USS Abner Reed, a destroyer with more than 300 men aboard, was sailing near an island of the US territory of Alaska 75 years ago, hunting for Japanese submarines. About 1.50 am on August 18, 1943, a huge explosion separated the stern from the ship and more than 90 sailors went into the water. About 20 were rescued, one body was pulled from the Bering Sea, but 70 men were never found. The exact location of their remains was a mystery until July, when searchers on a team funded by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, using modern sophisticated equipment, went looking for the stern and other underwater battlefield casualties. Daryl Weathers, a ship fitter on the Abner Reed, said Wednesday he was surprised by the news they had found the World War II ship's sheared stern. That's the end of the world up there, he said from his home in Seal Beach, near Los Angeles. Weathers, 94, said the crew tried to save their shipmates but oil had spilled into the cold water and it was tough to pull people out. They were slippery and you couldn't keep a hold of them, he said. The crew put a boat in the water and threw flotation gear for the men but the conditions prevented many from being rescued. The general area has been known for years, but researchers focused on finding the stern this year. In July, Sonar found a potential site and the team sent an unmanned vehicle down for a look. The stern, 75 feet long and about 18 feet high, was encrusted with sea life but it was unmistakable. The search team also saw a gun and rudder control. We've entered a new age of exploration, Mark Mullen, director of the School of Marine Science and Policy at the University of Delaware and co-founder of Project Recover, said this week, according to a news release. New sensors and improved underwater robots that can bring back real-time images are driving new discoveries. The stern and the remains will stay where they are. It is hallowed ground, explained Paul Taylor of the Naval History and Heritage Command. The Navy has a long-standing tradition that sites like these are a fit and final resting place for those who perished at sea, he said. It's a war grave and we treat it as such.